The Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act of 1938 is a federal statute aimed at ensuring food, drugs, and cosmetics are safe to consume or use. The act is enforced by the Food and Drug Administration, or the FDA. In 1962, Congress amended the act to impose labeling requirements on drug manufacturers. To carry out these amendments, the FDA commissioner issued a new regulation. This regulation required drug manufacturers to prominently display a drug's generic name, and not just its brand name, on all labels and advertisements. The purpose of the regulation was to let patients and physicians know that many expensive brand name drugs were actually the same as inexpensive generic drugs. But drug manufacturers opposed the regulation because they didn't believe the act required such extensive labeling. Before the regulation was even enforced by the FDA, 37 drug manufacturers, including Abbott Laboratories, sued the FDA commissioner and the Secretary of Health, John Gardner, in federal district court. The plaintiffs challenged the new regulation, arguing that it exceeded the commissioner's authority under the act. The district court ruled in favor of the plaintiffs, finding that the commissioner had exceeded his authority. The United States Court of Appeals for the Third Circuit reversed, holding that the act didn't authorize pre-enforcement review of the regulation. The Third Circuit also held that there was no case or controversy allowing for judicial review. To resolve a circuit split, the United States Supreme Court granted cert. The issue was whether a controversy over an agency regulation is ripe for judicial review before the agency has even attempted to enforce it. Writing for the majority, Justice Harlan found that the Act authorized pre-enforcement review. Under the Administrative Procedure Act, which governs administrative agencies, the court can review agency decisions. The court held that judicial review shouldn't be withheld unless there's clear and convincing evidence that Congress intended to restrict judicial review. There was no evidence of that in this case. Justice Harlan also wrote that the doctrine of ripeness prevents courts from prematurely deciding abstract or general issues. Agency decisions won't be reviewed unless there's an actual case or controversy ripe for judicial review. Harlan described ripeness as a two-part inquiry. First, is the issue fit for judicial resolution? And second, will refusing judicial review cause hardship to the parties? In this case, the answer to both questions was yes. First, the issue was fit for judicial resolution. The commissioner's statutory authority was a purely legal question that didn't require an examination of facts. The regulation was a final agency decision that was definitive and could no longer be changed by the FDA. Next, withholding judicial resolution would cause hardship to the plaintiffs. To comply with the regulation, they'd have to change all their labels, advertisements, and promotional materials, which would be burdensome and expensive. On the other hand, if the plaintiffs didn't change their labels and ads, they'd face serious sanctions. Therefore, the court reversed the Third Circuit's decision and remanded the case. Justice Fortas dissented. Fortas wrote that the act didn't allow pre-enforcement review of agency decisions. He predicted that federal courts would become flooded with requests for such review. Fortas warned that this would delay regulations designed to protect the public's health. Justice Clark also dissented. Clark noted that the majority's opinion did a disservice to the public because the regulation was designed to protect patients from being ripped off by pharmaceutical companies. Abbott Laboratories v. Gardner is a seminal case on the doctrine of ripeness. It also marked a change in judicial thought. After this case, courts were far more willing to get involved in pre-enforcement review of agency decisions.